Capturing a clear radiographic image requires attention to detail throughout each step. Even minor errors, from patient positioning to film development, can result in faulty images. These hinder a dentist's ability to diagnose and lead to inappropriate treatment plans. This video focuses on how I consistently minimize these errors in my practice. The first thing I do is instruct my patient to remain still during the exposure. Additionally, I ensure that the tube head and the film once positioned do not shake. What happens if they are not stabilized? A blurred image is obtained. Exposing the same radiograph packet twice also results in a blurred image. The next step where errors occur is when I position the film. If the film extends less than 1 8th inch beyond the teeth, the final image does not capture the crowns or occlusal lens. Conversely, the apical lens may be cut off if more than 1 8th inch extends beyond the teeth. Improper film positioning also leads to an error called occlusal tilt. To avoid this error, the film is placed parallel to the teeth. To ensure a clear image, the film is always positioned with the lead foil facing away from the x-ray tube. If this is not done, a tire track pattern, also known as a herringbone pattern, or reverse image will appear on the final radiograph. Now let us move to the next step, which is x-ray tube positioning. Here I ensure the cone is centered directly over the area of interest and the film to avoid a cone cut or a partial image. Consider I capture an image with an excessive vertical angulation of the position indicating device. What have I got? Yes, a foreshortened image. While insufficient angulation produces an elongated image. As we learned in our previous video on the bisecting angle technique, accurate vertical and horizontal angulation is essential for optimal radiographs. Inaccurate horizontal angulation can lead to overlapped contacts and a cervical burnout or adumbration. Cervical burnout is clinically significant as it can be misdiagnosed as dental caries. The next step after correctly positioning the PID is to expose the patient. As discussed previously, exposure settings significantly impact the final radiograph these settings include milliampers, kilovoltage peak, and exposure time. If these factors are all reduced below recommended levels, a light radiograph is produced. Conversely, increasing all three factors results in a darker image. The source-to-film distance also affects image density. A longer source-to-film distance results in a lighter image while a shorter source to film distance produces a darker image. KVP and exposure time also influence image contrast. A lower KVP with a longer exposure time results in a high contrast image, where details are distinct. Conversely, a higher KVP with a shorter exposure time produces a low contrast image, making it difficult to identify abnormalities. What is the next step after patient exposure? Yes, placing the film in the developer is the right answer. Carelessness in the dark room can compromise our final image. Let's explore some common errors that can occur here. If the developing time is too short, a light radiograph is produced. Conversely, excessive fixation can also lead to a light radiograph. If the film is left in the developer for too long or fixing is inadequate, a dark film results. Developing also impacts the image's contrast. Underdevelopment produces a low contrast image, while overdevelopment increases contrast. Film fog is a common error that arises from mistakes in the dark room. It occurs when light leaks are present, the safe light has improper wattage, or positioning, or the white light is turned on before the film finishes fixing, typically within one to two minutes. Pop quiz.
yellow or brown stain on the film is another common error. These stains arise from two main causes, using an exhausted developer or fixer and not rinsing the film thoroughly after removing it from the fixer. Pop quiz Excessive rinsing of the radiograph can lead to another error called emulsion peel. Additionally, abrasion of the film during processing can also cause an emulsion peel. We have thus covered the most common errors that can lead to faulty images while in practice. By understanding these mistakes, you can minimize them and achieve optimal radiographs. We have now come to the end of this video. Hope you had fun learning with us.